Everyone wants to be brave, but what is courage fighting? Sometimes real courage means fighting for peace. Fighting for freedom at all costs is the greatest courage. The world is talking about how bravely Ukrainian soldiers fight. The Ukrainian army is indeed made up of the bravest soldiers in the world. Many stories of heroism in the Ukrainian army are now known all over the world. Everyone admires the bravery of the Ukrainian soldiers. But in recent days, some news coming out of Ukraine shows that bravery is spreading rapidly. According to these reports, some Russian soldiers had decided to join the Ukrainian army during very brave things against Putin. Ukrainian officials made striking statements about this issue after the statements. In fact, the whole world is talking about Ukrainian soldiers in the war between Ukraine and Russia because Ukrainian soldiers managed to surprise the whole world, especially after Zelensky's brave statements. The Ukrainian army fought with great courage and successfully resisted the Russian invasion. The Ukrainian army won victories on many fronts against a much larger Russian army. In addition, many Ukrainian soldiers risked their lives and carried out heroic operations, which attracted everyone's attention. The heroic stories of Ukrainian soldiers were talked about all over the world. But the story of Russian soldiers in this war is also very interesting. The soldiers fighting in the Russian army are in a very bad situation. Russian soldiers feel that they cannot win this war anymore. They don't have enough equipment, and they live in very bad conditions. Also, most of the soldiers in the Russian army are very po. The people in Russia are in great poverty, especially in the regions where minorities live. People are known to have economic problems. The Russian army is generally composed of minorities living in these regions. Putin possibly recruits Russian soldiers for war. However, these soldiers who join the war do not want to fight for Putin because Putin is responsible for these people living in poverty. Most of the soldiers serving in the Russian army are very angry with Putin. This discourages them from fighting soldiers sent to the battlefield realize many things. Putin claims that the Ukrainian people love Russian soldiers, but the Ukrainian people say that the Russian army should withdraw as soon as possible. Seeing the reaction of the Ukrainian people, the Russian soldiers realized that this war was started only for Putin's political interests. As a result, Russian soldiers start to surrender to the Ukrainian army. Ukrainian government is using very strong propaganda to get Russian soldiers to surrender. The Ukrainian government says that if the Russian soldiers surrender, this war will end soon. Russian soldiers who want the war to end as soon as possible decide to surrender to the Ukrainian army. The Ukrainian government is also making great efforts to ensure the safe surrender of Russian soldiers. As you know, the I Want to Live project set up by the Ukrainian government has been very effective on Russian soldiers. Thousands of Russian soldiers called this hotline and surrendered to the Ukrainian army. This move by the Ukrainian government led to a serious weakening of the Russian army. The Ukrainian army used an interesting method to promote this project. Special drone zone by the Ukrainian army carried the brochure of these projects to the battlefield. Ukrainian drones dropped these brochures in areas where Russian soldiers were located. When the Russian soldiers examined these brochures, they saw what they had to do to surrender. They started calling the number written in the leaflets. After a telephone conversation, the Russian soldiers had a safe plan to surrender. Special plans were prepared for the surrender of Russian soldiers in each unit. The identity of the surrendered Russian soldiers was kept secret, and thousands of Russian soldiers surrendered. After a while, the surrendered Russian soldiers started to share a lot of information. Officials in the Ukrainian army held private meetings with the surrendered Russian soldiers. In these interviews, a lot of information was obtained about the units in which the Russian soldiers were stationed the location of the units, and the number of soldiers in these units. Very critical information was obtained. The Ukrainian army organized very important operations using this information. It was a nightmare for Putin that Russian soldiers gave information to the Ukrainian army. Putin failed to prevent it. However, according to Ukrainian media reports, there is much worse development for Putin. Former movie actor Vitaly Matvienko, the spokesperson of the I Want to Live project, made a very important statement on this issue. According to Matvienko's statements, Russian soldiers want to cause more damage to the Russian army while surrendering. For this, Russian soldiers have an interesting suggestion. Russian soldiers say that they want to bring ammunition and equipment when they surrender. 
Many Russian soldiers who surrendered to the Ukrainian army are now making moves in this regard. Before surrendering, Russian soldiers go to arms depots and try to seize the most important weapons. These weapons are then used by the Ukrainian army. As a result of this method, the Ukrainian army captured a large number of Russian weapons. Ukrainian army now has a very large stock of ammunition. The Russian army is running out of ammunition every day. The successful actions of the Ukrainian army against Russian ammunition depots are among the most important reasons for the Russian army's ammunition crisis. The surrender of Russian soldiers to the Ukrainian army taking ammunition and equipment is also causing great damage to the Russian army. Moreover, according to some reports in the Ukrainian press, some of the surrendered Russian soldiers are using a different method. Russian soldiers set fire to ammunition depots. In this way, many ammunition depots in the Russian army caught fire. Russian commanders are trying to come up with new plans to protect the ammunition. However, since many Russian soldiers have surrendered, the commanders in the Russian army cannot trust any soldier. Especially recently, the number of soldiers surrendering in the Russian army is increasing very rapidly. Battalion Matvienko touched on this issue in a statement and shared very important data. Matvienko said that a record was broken in this regard last month. This month, more Russian soldiers continue to surrender to. In one month alone, the I Want to Live Projects hotline receives more than 3,000 phone calls. As a result of these calls, Russian soldiers surrender. The continued surrender of the Russian army soldiers is disrupting all of Putin's plans. Putin now realizes that the Russian army cannot win this war, but he does not want to withdraw from this war. If more Russian soldiers continue to surrender, Putin will be forced to withdraw from this war. This is what the Russian soldiers are aiming for by quitting the war. The Russian army began its operations to encircle the city from the north and the south. They advanced into Bodenivka and Ivanovsky, where they came face to face with the Ukrainian defense units, to the minor surprise of the Ukrainian army. Ukrainian special forces units stationed in Bodenivka and Ivanovsky. When the Russian army went head to head with the Ukrainian defense forces, the special forces circled behind the Russian troops in both directions. Caught between two fires, the Russian troops could not hold out any longer. And the Ukrainian army killed about 2,500 Wagner fighters and soldiers of the regular armed forces of the Russian Federation. Some soldiers surrendered to Ukrainian special forces and were then sent to the Kiev region to be used for prisoner exchange. The conclusion of the operation of the Russian army in this way shows us that it is slowly losing its effectiveness in Bakhmut. The Russian army attempts 40 to 50 attacks and attacks every day in the Bakhmut region, making more than 500 attacks using all available weapons, but without any tangible success from any of these attacks. At the same time, the military political leadership of the Russian Federation does not take into account significant personnel losses. Mobilized soldiers in some units of the Russian army largely refuse to participate in active military operations and carry out brutal reprisals against those who reject their commanders. In particular, they are thrown into pits to be subjected to physical and psychological pressure and torture chambers are arranged for the most disobedient. The Russian army continues offensive operations in the direction of Lyman to reach the administrative border of the Luhansk region and is trying to push back the Ukrainian troops to the right bank of the Zdravitz River on the Makivka Torsk border. The Russian army has increased the use of operational, tactical, and army aviation to strike the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine. Additional air reconnaissance equipment was recorded for the redeployment of motorized rifle and artillery units. The personnel of the BARS detachment as well as for strengthening the grouping of the Russian occupation troops in the indicated direction. At the same time, according to Dotter, the Russian army stationed in the Kremino enclave was demoralized and cancelled their vacation due to a possible attack by the armed forces of Ukraine. Also, the command of the Russian troops orders the recovery of ammunition in this direction. Russian troops in the Marinka and Avdivka directions do not cease to try to seize control of the settlements. About 20 to 40 attack attempts are taking place in each of the indicated directions. In these attacks, the Russian army fires up to 200 cannons on average. After unsuccessful attempts to attack on the Volodar direction and in the Donetsk region and after significant losses, the Russian army resorted to attacks on the positions of the Ukrainian troops near Vodiani, Volodar and Stepko. At the same time, 
as a result of significant losses among the personnel of the 155th and 40th separate Marine Infantry Brigades during the fighting in the Valadar region. The mobilized soldiers and Wagner units were redeployed in the indicated direction. The Russian The Army continues to bombard Ukrainian troops in the Zaporizhia and Kherson directions. Missile and bomb attacks were carried out in the region of the cities of Kherson and Zaporizhia. The Russian army has strengthened its forces and equipment in certain directions to prevent the attack of the Ukrainian armed forces. But no one is sure that Russia will be able to achieve success with these steps. Ukraine's latest assessment confirms experts' long-held predictions that Russia cannot currently conduct multiple offensive operations simultaneously. As Russia prepares to counterattack Ukraine to retake Russian-controlled areas, the bloody battle for the eastern Ukraine's industrial city of Bakhmut rages on. Russia has been massing troops in the region since the summer of 2022. The capture of the war-ravaged city will be Russia's first major victory on the battlefield in more than six months. At the same time, Russian troops are preparing to block Ukraine's advance in the Black Sea Peninsula of Crimea, which was illegally annexed by Russian President Vladimir Putin back in 2014. Russian forces are fortifying the region. Incoming satellite images show Russian forces building an extensive network of defensive fortifications on the Black Sea Peninsula. So what about the attacks of the Russian army? Frankly, given the state of the Russian army, it is quite difficult to say anything about it. There are long-standing considerations that the Russian army, in its current form, cannot conduct large-scale, simultaneous offensive operations on multiple axes. The operations in Bakhmut the other day proved to us the reality of these assessments. The Kremlin said it has yet to undertake the necessary realignment of the war effort to support large-scale Russian force formation and effectively exploit economies of scale. We see Russians striving to re-establish forces, such as crypto-mobilization, leaning on undeveloped parts of Russia to create volunteers, relying on new small PMCs, and putting pressure on various Russian government entities to sponsor and pay hiring campaigns. An elite group of Russian businessmen and leaders allegedly provided financial support to the military's efforts to build power among elements of the Russian state. The Kremlin billed the Russian state energy company Gazprom for its volunteer recruitment efforts in the Donetsk region, offering volunteers a monthly salary of 400,000 rubles. Among the measures Putin has taken to expand enlistment efforts for his war in Ukraine is the signing of a decree removing the upper age limit for Russian National Guards stationed in areas of Ukraine under the control of Russian forces. The decision to continue to rely on financial incentives for voluntary recruitment with both one-time payments and accrued lifetime benefits means a huge burden for the Russian economy, which will create huge long-term structural costs and cannot be sustainable indefinitely. Such a step will not support Russia's war effort. While the Russian army already has so many losses in Ukraine and it may lose important cities it controls during the Ukrainian offensive. As a matter of fact, what happened in Bakhmut the other day is the most obvious proof of this. Thank you for watching us.